we are back here in Way the Hunter and back on Nezper's Valley, but for the first time ever in multiplayer. I've talked about this over the past couple of days, but I am actually prepping this content for while I'll be away hunting in Indiana on public land. And in Way the Hunter, multiplayer, you get a fresh spawn of animals, everything is brand new, completely separate from your single player population. And hunting on public land in real life, you never know what you may encounter. Same kind of idea here. So I feel like it fits, and this is the map with Whitetail, which is what I'll be after. Now, another first for us is bringing the new weapons from the Styre Arms Pack here to Nesper's Valley as well. We have the Styre Fullstock and the incredible sounding Styre Gams. And one thing that I definitely want to try to mess with is some range. A huge advantage to multiplayer is you really don't have to worry about, you know, shooting a future 5-star. This may be a future 5-star mule deer. <laughs> But because we're a multiplayer, it's not something I'm really worried about. I think he's a 3-star, and honestly, he kind of looked like he maybe could be a future 5-star, and yes, we could fast-forward the time in multiplayer and get him to age. It does work, but kind of like when we hunted the albino chamois over on Transylvania, that's not the point of this hunt per se. If we can get a 5-star or a rare or something, that is awesome, but I don't really want to water down the experience of aging things and watching them grow, so we're just going to take whatever we find today and not really worry too much about passing time or what the genetics might be. As for our buck, he may be a two star. Right on the edge between two and three star, I believe. Ended up with a double long shot. It insta dropped him at 263 yards, 79%. Oh, he was a four star. Bigger than I thought. A decent buck, and actually, he wouldn't have been a future five star. So, all worked out just fine. And at some stage, when we get up into the mountains and I definitely want to focus at least a little bit on Whitetail. I'm intentionally hunting through the public land part of Nez Perce, as that's kind of the theme of this hunt first. We're going to try to maybe land some thousand yard shots if those opportunities arise. Now I will say I was kind of open for more out of the public land stint of this hunt, but we're into deer drink time, and I don't think it's necessarily the most efficient thing to hunt nothing but public land during that. Another four star mule deer buck, another good looking one. And I think we'll just go ahead and pop him as well with the Styre Games. That's going to be a kind of weird shot just because of the way he's laying. Got him to stand up immediately with that. That's a wider looking set of antlers than the last. And I guess the white tail is just going to respond to our gunshot. Managed to swing down here and get to where we can claim this guy. This one I think is a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's a 94 percenter. Had we stayed on this map in past time, he definitely could have been a 5-star. But like I said, not something we're really worried about today. Just an opportunity to get to use these guns a little bit more. Those Whitetail did not spook. I thought they were right by the bridge. I see a doe there. Sadly, I think the best buck in there is that one in the back. Gonna go to the full stock here just for the sake of switching it up. And I would certainly imagine as he's gonna bed right there. This will not be a very long track job. I'm actually surprised he went anywhere. Kind of looking like he'll just drop right back there behind, but with this gun, for him to even do anything is kind of surprising. I mean, I gotta think single lung? Now his double lung? With plenty of energy, that's absurd that he actually got up. That was even a 73 percenter. So we should be seeing better genetics as we move through this private land. Got another herd down there, hopefully with something a little better. You know, this has been a strange hunt thus far. A real lack of whitetail and mule deer in the areas I kind of expected. So I figured, why not head up here into the mountains and see if we can find some opportunities at super long shots. You know, maybe we should find an opportunity at an accurate shot because none of those <laughs> seem to impact at all where we wanted. A little bit of a crosswind, not terrible 20 feet per second. The first shot seemed way high and from there nothing really worked, but eventually got it down. And I mean, based on the fact that the blood here is still red blood, I don't think we ever did hit a vital. That was straight in the shoulder blade. Not high like I thought. Just need to be a bit further back. We've had that issue with bears. Second shot, actually low and too far forward again. Third shot. Too far forward. Fourth shot. Too high. At least not too far forward that time. That was 
pretty rough. 68% one star mature. Let's try not to do that again. But maybe we can finally line up some of those long shots I was talking about. So hopefully it starts now. We have 400 yards basically at a pretty decent looking ram. So if we get up here, go ahead and get prone. Hopefully while he is broadside, how do we get that far away from where we were trying to aim there? That's him right there. So we're going to go ahead and use the hunter sense just so we can see a little better. That got him. Not a bad looking ram. And I thought at least it hit where we wanted. That may be him starting to stumble. I can't quite tell. Yeah, that's pink blood. And quite frankly, because we're kind of going for this type of approach, we can probably just go grab the UTV and buzz our way over there. Actually, he only made it maybe 55 yards. That was kind of interesting how that worked out. Blood running down the side of the tree and everything. I'm not sure how big this is. Maybe a three or four star yet again. Double lunged him 405 yards away. Still open for much farther shot opportunities. Dang, that was another feature five star as well. Isn't there normally more information over here? I'm not sure what that's about. I like how he shot it exactly at midnight. Four star 95 percenter. Lots of almost here on this server, but opportunities to shoot at some decent stuff at long range. I'm not sure a thousand yards is going to be a possibility. Probably 900. But we do have some whitetail out there. And yeah, I think this is going to be about as far as we can get a shot. Again, we'll go with the full stock for the extra knockdown power. And that, if we're going to zero for 875, that is still a really long shot. We're going to have to be prone. Crosswind is certainly not going to help us. And we'll lose a little distance getting up here where we can actually see and be prone. That's a buck. If this actually hits where we wanted to, I'll be kind of surprised. He's turning back. I want him to sit still. There's just too much to worry about. Definitely hit him. And the question is, is it a lethal shot? I couldn't quite tell. I guess we'll scoot over there and take a look. I guess, by the way, the hurdle whitetail came back. I don't even know which one we shot at, and I doubt that we could even identify it. So maybe, well, the mule deer that just ran through are going to potentially spook them. We're kind of getting like a long animation here. I'm surprised we got that. We had to aim way low zero for 300. I just didn't want to spend the extra time to keep zeroing lower. So the question is, did we actually land a decent shot on the first one? We got a bonus buck, and I guess perhaps it was the same one. You know why they came back, though? It was like 200 yards closer to fast travel to this tent. I keep forgetting. They, when you fast travel, herds just kind of go back to where they were. So that really doesn't help us in terms of whether or not that shot was good. We do have a mark. It was right here at the blue marker. Was it under the rock? Or are we off by a bit? No, that's going to be it there. So unfortunately, not a kill shot at whatever that was, 850. Maybe we can get one that's not such a terrible crosswind. What are the odds this was the same deer? Not the same deer. We hit him lung, stomach, liver, intestines at that pretty bad quartering angle. 41 percenter. And hopefully next time we can align something a little bit better for a long shot. And go figure. We've got an albino white dill doe down here on public land. And I wonder if we can set up some kind of longer shot. I, they were... I never even saw them. They must have a zone down in the trees here. Now, we could kind of do that exact same thing. We could just fast travel. And I'm kind of... Th oh, that might be a good idea. Because we could maybe get up on that mountain. Let's try it. I, I think they should go back. I'm going to mark somewhere off in that area. And then we'll fast travel north of the mountain and get up there. And there she is, 730 yards out. Now she's laying broadside, and I'm not sure if a bedded deer would be a good thing to shoot at or not. One thing I want to check is the hit energy at that range with both weapons. We'll see her out to 700, so we're looking in the right spot. 2300 joules with the Styre full stock, with the GAMs, 
Oh, 2600 joule. How interesting. So the energy loss over that range with the full stock and the heavier round actually means we're hitting with less force. Make sure that we're getting that right. Yeah, we're going to hit with better energy with the GAM. So we'll wait. Hopefully she stands up, gives us a good broadside shot. We can try to take an albino doe at 700 plus yards. So the deer beside her just turned broadside. And it was standing exactly where she is now. So I'm hoping she follows that same path, turns to her right, which she's kind of doing, and gives us that opportunity. It's probably going to be fairly quick. Like when we get a broadside angle, we got to go for this. That's what we want. See if she'll just stand still. We're going to recatch our breath for a second. Oh, that looked good. I think that's pink blood from here. And a lot of blood. That got her. Pretty darn cool. And good to know, too. I, I always kind of thought that was something that could be the case. Shooting whether it's the 300 or other larger calibers. And we'll have to check on that. Because I do know that the 300 doesn't lose nearly as much energy over distance as the full sock. That's something that we looked at right when the Sire Arms pack came out. She's going to go down right out there at about 750. We can go down there and take a look. I brought the UTV up here. For one, because it made it much easier to get here. But for two, because we can buzz right down the hill and go and grab her. Now, of course, she had to drop right on this rock here. It was literally a perfect photo otherwise. And I don't know, I, I've seen it done. Somehow people set up animals for like better trophy shots. I drove over this thing, drove into this thing. It just doesn't move. So yeah, it's really unfortunate. Otherwise, it's a nice spot. Could look pretty good. Maybe we can save it with Photoshop or something because otherwise I really like the, the way this is. We'll just kind of add a little bit of blur to the background. And we're just going to call that good because, I mean, the way she landed just doesn't make it look as nice. As for the actual shot, though, by the way, she's a young. You can actually see some of the, like, spots and stuff on the back. I don't know that we've shot a young albino doe before. That's really, really interesting. So the shot was high, artery and double lung. But it got the job done, got her down pretty fast. That 6.5 Creedmoor round at 722 yards. Really, I mean, we're hitting... The far side lung, with plenty of energy to bring her down. 67 pounds, we're probably not going to tag it because there's nowhere in the lodge to actually put it. But maybe we will get a screenshot in here only because the one on the ground didn't turn out how we liked. I think the lighting on this side maybe looks a little nicer. Got a couple of photos in there. And I wanted to show one other thing as well. With the Styre full stock, talking about the energies here, at whatever this is, probably 100 yards or less, 80 yards roughly, we're hitting with 4,300 joules. So over 700 yards, we're losing about half the energy. With the 6.5 Creedmoor, about 80 yards away, we are looking at 3,000 joules. 600 more yards, we're dropping like a couple hundred joules of energy. That 6.5 round is super flat shooting and really good for those longer range shots. And frankly, I should have thought of that when we shot the first buck. I don't know if it was a good enough shot or not. Maybe the shot placement just wasn't where we needed it to be. But I gotta think the 6.5 would have helped. I am determined to get a 1,000 yard shot off in this video. I thought we'd be able to get several. It has just been tough. Finding a herd that's in a position where we can set that up and then executing, getting to a spot we can actually see that far. And I think in this case, we should be able to do it. These couple of deer are walking at us, and there were more down there. I'm not sure if they are maybe so far away we can't see them, or why. We can only see two right now, but that's about 950. And I think if we really play with the direction that we move in here, we can probably get it done even if we go back kind of to the east. Might actually work. Now, the angle's not great. It's 1,010 yards and a little bit quartering. Oh, he just turned back the other way. He was basically facing exactly how he wanted. I don't know energy-wise, like, even if we could align this perfectly. I'm not sure neck actually gets it done. We probably got a punch into the lungs. Oh, it's so tempting, though. He's going to bed right there. Can we do this? 
Oh, no way. <laughs> Not only did we just nail that, we hit him so hard that another deer spawned right there. <laughs> so we must have been really close, like on the edge of render. Oh, that one might not work as good. Try to lead it as it walked into the shot, and I think it just didn't really move forward after that. That was absurd. So real quick. Yeah, that second shot, little far forward. I wish we had just given it another half a second. Because trying to lead it didn't work. <laughs> no doubt. That was a head or neck shot. That's ridiculous. 1,019 yards. Not only did we get the skull... We were close enough to the brain to get the cavity damage. We will take that a thousand plus yards away with the Styre Games. That's insane though, 2400 plus joules at that range? I mean it loses next to nothing, flying, you know, half a mile plus. Really, really impressive stuff. So I kind of think we're probably going to leave the video at that. We killed an albino doe at 700 yards, we just headshot a white tail bug at over 1000. I'd love to try to do stuff like that without the hunter sense, because I know, like, being told where to compensate for the wind and the holdover and stuff like that doesn't necessarily make it as impressive, but I'm more impressed with the gun than anything we were able to do skill-wise or anything like that. Just to see what that thing is capable of is really, really cool. So nice to get out here and weigh the hunter and do something a little bit different. I'm kind of glad we didn't add any kind of, you know, five-star bucks or albino melanistic deer that you know we haven't kind of homegrown to say it that way just a fun little hunt long shots albino doe a good time out here in way the hunter on Desperse valley but anyway that's gonna do it for this video as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time